Hey everyone, I recently released a bunch of new versions for the Element Inspection plugin. And one of the coolest features this ships is macOS support. So I figured it would be a great time to talk about this plugin again. So let's see what it has to offer. For this demo, I prepared a little TypeScript project. And this project has Node.js, the Element Inspection plugin and the Bolt plugin installed in their latest versions. On the right hand side, you can see my most favorite application when it comes to automation demos, Microsoft Excel. And the workflow we will implement in this demo is the following. First of all, I want to select all the entries in the amount column and format them as a currency. Following that, I want to select all my entries and format them as a table. And as a final step, I want to add a total sum row at the bottom. Nothing too fancy and anyone familiar with Excel might be able to do that, but we want to automate this. And specifically, we want to automate this without requiring screenshots and without using OCR at all. So let's see how the element inspection plugin can help us out here. The element inspection plugin lets us inspect elements of a particular window. So in order to do that, we will need to identify our window first. For this, let's import some packages. Let's import the screen object and our window with title helper from Node.js core and the window finder provided by the Bolt plugin. We have everything set up and we will now be able to locate the Excel window on the right hand side of my screen. And once we located the window, we can focus it. Now let's take a first look at the element inspection plugin. For this, we need to import it first. Once imported, the module self registers and we are now able to access elements of a window. We can do that by calling get elements on a window instance. we log that, we can take a look at the output of this method. As you can see, we received a full JSON representation of our window elements. We have buttons here or text elements, menu items, you name it. Now let's try to write our first query for a UI element. In this case, I will be searching for this topmost amount table cell up here. And we can do that as follows. Let's call that topmost amount equals excel.find. And we're looking for a window element that is described by several possible properties, but in this case, a value of 10,543. And if we were able to locate this element, we can use our highlight function to visualize its region. Now let's run this example to see if it works. If we now run this example again, but instead of just highlighting it, also print the element that we located, We can see that we have an element that is actually a text area and it's nested inside a group, which is in turn nested inside a table cell. And we were only able to locate the element because we were searching for an unspecified type of element, but only for the value 10,543. To me, this is kind of unsatisfying because I want to explicitly search for a table cell with a certain value. So. 
let's see how we can specify a query that is precise and also does not require too much repetition. Let's define a custom function here. And we can pass a string to this function and we will return a custom query. First, we are looking for an element that is a text area and we can provide certain properties to, the, to it. Previously, we provided a value, but this time we want to use an index. So we can pass our index for the title. So the title will contain the, the index of the table cell. So in this case, it would be B2, B3, B4, whatever. Since we are specifically searching for a text area that is nested inside of a group, we can specify a so-called in relation. So we now specify that we are looking for a text area that is nested inside a group. And this group in turn should be nested inside a cell. And if we now switch our window element described by query with our custom table cell query and search for the index B2, we can try that again. And we're able to pinpoint the precise table cell we are looking for. And we can use that mechanism again to search for the bottom cell, which is at index B7. Once we have these two cells, we can start using our mouse to modify them. So we will now move our mouse to our topmost cell and once we are there we can drag our mouse down to our bottom cell. And now we have selected all the entries in our amount column. Next we want to press this little menu button up here which is called accounting number format. In order to do that, we can search for it in our window by looking for a menu button. And this menu button has a title of accounting number format. Once we have located this button, we can move our mouse towards it and click our button. Now let's run that. And as you can see, we formatted our table column. We can now repeat the previous process to search for the top left cell and drag our mouse down to the bottom cell. This will select all the elements in our current table. Once we have selected all our items, we want to click this Format as Table menu button up here. So we can once again search for a menu button with title Format as Table, move our mouse towards it and click it. Now, in order to select elements in this pop-up window down here, we will have to search for this window first, since this pop-up is its own window. We can do that by utilizing the wait for mechanism because this pop-up opens dynamically. So we will want to dynamically wait for this window to appear. And once we have that window, we can search for elements in it. So we want to select a certain table style and we can do that by searching for the radio button that represents this table cell.
Once we located the button, we can once again move our mouse and click it. Okay, now we are presented with another pop-up window, but we can also easily handle that one. We will once again wait for this window to open. Once we have acquired our window instance, we can search for our confirm button. And we will now move our mouse, click on it. You know the drill. Let's run it again. And we have formatted our table. Now the last step is to click this total row element up here and our workflow is finished. So let's revert the formatting real quick. Let's call the last item we want to click total row. And we want to search for a checkbox with title total row. Once again, move the mouse, click the element and our workflow should be completed. So let's run it again. So now we have a neatly formatted table and we repeatedly steered the UI elements of a complex UI without relying on any image or OCR. To me, this is a tremendous success because I kept working on this plugin for quite some time and I'm really happy how it turned out. Let me know what you think in the comments. Check out nutjs.dev and have a nice day.